Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to another video, and welcome back to another case study. Right behind me, I have a very beautiful 2015 Toyota Tundra pickup truck. It's got the 5.7 liter V8 engine in it. Customer complaint is that the vehicle intermittently stalls on them. Sometimes while they're driving, it just shuts off. Uh, but whenever it does shut off, they're able to cycle the key off and back on and start it back up again. So anyway, the customer actually found me through a recent YouTube video that I made about uh, Toyota Tundra, there was a no start. Anyway, they saw the video, they were able to locate me. I don't know how, but they did. And so the vehicle is here now. So anyways, they were pretty certain they were dealing with a fuel pump issue. I'm not sure how they came to that conclusion, uh, but they wanted me to check it out. So the truck is here, let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so first things first, let's go ahead and uh, run a code scan on the vehicle using the scan tool. The check engine light is not illuminated, or at least I don't see it. Um, but let's just go ahead and see if we have any stored codes. Because hopefully whenever this thing stalled, it may have left a code that we could probably use as some guidance. All right, so let's go into trouble codes. The vehicle is running right now, which is something I forgot to tell you guys. The vehicle is running. So, I mean, at this point, the vehicle has not stalled. It seems to be running fine. So let's go ahead and see what codes we have. Looks like up at the top, we have a PO230 fuel pump primary circuit code. That's going to be a really important one. We have a P1603 engine stall history, a P1604 startability malfunction, and a P1605 rough idling. Okay, these are all current codes right here. Uh, I think the history codes are just showing the same codes over again. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I think the one that we should be concentrating on is probably this PO230. Now, I don't know if anybody's tried to mess with this thing yet, or if anybody's tried to disconnect a relay or anything like that. So, you know, that's another thing we got to keep in the back of our mind. We don't know if anybody's uh, been in here trying to mess around or trying to troubleshoot the problem because in doing so, they may have inadvertently set codes. So I think one of the first things I want to do is actually just clear the codes and uh, we'll see which one comes back. So I'm going to go over here to clear DTCs. Yeah, go ahead and clear it. No fault codes detected. So we are clear. We can go into trouble codes now. And we have no fault codes detected. Uh, one of the things I want to try to do real quick is cycle the key off and on. Off. And then back on. And we'll check for a check engine light. I don't see one. Let's go back to the scan tool, double check our trouble codes. No fault codes detected. Okay, so now that we have those codes, I think we have something to work with. Uh, let's go over to all data and see if we can get a description on what the codes mean. All right guys, so we're inside my office. I've got all data pulled up on the computer over here. And if you look, I've got the code description pulled up for PO230, fuel pump primary circuit. Now this code description is gonna give us uh, more information on what the code means and why the code gets set. So if we look here, it says that the fuel pump circuit consists of the ECM, the fuel pump, and the fuel pump ECU, which of course operates the fuel pump. So based on the engine output, the ECM determines the fuel pump speed. So that's important to note because the fuel pump speed on this fuel pump is variable. That means that it's going to change depending on the needs of the engine. Now it says here, the speed is then converted to a duty signal and sent to the fuel pump ECU. Based on the signal sent from the ECM, the fuel pump ECU adjusts the fuel pump operating speed between three settings. So essentially what they're saying is that the ECM, the engine control module, looks at the engine load and then determines the speed at which the fuel pump should turn. The ECM does that by sending a duty cycle signal to the fuel pump ECU and then the fuel pump ECU then controls the fuel pump. And according to this description, it says that there's three different settings or three different speeds that the fuel pump can run. Anyway, moving on, it says here, the fuel pump ECU has a self-diagnosis function and based on the fuel pump circuit condition, the fuel pump ECU outputs a diagnostic signal, a DI to the ECM and the ECM determines if there is a malfunction in the fuel pump circuit. So basically what they're saying there is that the fuel pump ECU has a diagnostic signal that it sends back to the ECM to tell it when there's a problem with the fuel pump. So if we look down over here, you'll see that uh, detection condition, it's saying that when the fuel pump is operating and the remaining fuel is 17 liters or more, 
the DI terminal output is low. The DI terminal is going to be the diagnostic terminal that's located on the fuel pump ECU. Then it also says here when the fuel pump is not operating, the DI terminal output is high. Now some possibilities as far as uh, failure, uh, trouble area, it says here you can either have an open or short in the fuel pump circuit. Uh, you could have a bad fuel pump, you could have a bad fuel pump ECU, or you could have a bad ECM. So the list of possibilities here is pretty big. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Looks like there's a monitor description here. It says to monitor the fuel pump circuit, the ECM checks the fuel pump control signal. That's the FPC, fuel pump control signal, and the diagnostic signal, DI. Again, if you remember, the FPC, fuel pump control signal, is a signal that the ECM is sending to the fuel pump ECU, which is a duty cycle signal. And that duty cycle signal is what tells the fuel pump ECU what speed to run the pump at. Then you have the diagnostic signal, the DI. This is a signal coming from the fuel pump ECU going back to the ECM. This signal is used to tell the ECM when there's a problem with the fuel pump circuit. Now, if we move on here, it says the fuel pump control voltage varies between zero volts and 12 volts duty cycle signal. So you'll have a duty cycle, a zero to 12 volt square wave. And then based on the condition of the fuel pump ECU malfunction, the DI voltage varies between zero volts and 12 volts. So I'm assuming uh, whenever the pump is on at a certain speed, the computer wants to see a certain voltage on that DI terminal. Now moving on here, it says the ECM then compares the variance of the fuel pump control voltage and the DI voltage and determines if the fuel pump circuit is malfunctioning. So again, the ECM is going to look at those two voltages, the one from the fuel pump control, the duty cycle signal, and then it's going to compare it to the DI, the diagnostic signal, and it's gonna use that to determine whether or not there's a malfunction in the system. Now over here it says, when the ECM determines that the fuel pump circuit is malfunction, a DTC is set immediately. Now if we scroll down here, you'll see that they provide a wiring diagram go ahead and pull this up all right and on this wiring diagram we can use it to get an overall view of how the system works again we have the fuel pump here this is where we have the fuel pump module or fuel pump ecu and this is where we have the engine control module and then we have the relays and power supplies so what we're going to be looking at is this module or this fuel pump ecu is going to have two connectors one connector is going to be the two wires going to the fuel pump and if i recall correctly this fuel pump is ground side controlled which means that it's always going to be sending out a 12 volt signal to the fuel pump that 12 volts goes back to the ground side of the fuel pump module and whenever the fuel pump module is ready to turn the pump on it's going to ground it on this terminal here so again the connector for the fuel pump is going to be these two wires right here a positive and a negative for the fuel pump control now if we look at the fuel pump ecu of course, there's certain inputs that it's going to need in order for it to function correctly. Number one, we're gonna need a battery voltage. So if you look here, this B plus is battery voltage supply to the actual module. If we follow this back, you'll see that it comes from two different relays. It comes from the fuel pump relay and it comes from the C OPN relay. Now, both of these relays need to be activated so that the power can flow through the fuel pump relay and also flow through the C OPN relay to get to the module itself. That power along with this ground is what's going to power up this module and wake it up. Now, if we look over here at the ECM, you'll see those two signal wires that we were talking about earlier. We have the FPC, which is a fuel pump control. This is going to be the speed control duty cycle signal that's coming from the ECM going to the fuel pump control module. This is how the ECM tells the fuel pump module how fast it should be turning the fuel pump. And then in return, we have the DI or the diagnostic terminal here. And this is going to be a diagnostic signal that comes from the fuel pump ECU and goes back to the engine computer. And this is how the engine computer knows when there is a malfunctioning in the circuit somewhere over here. Now the code description isn't very specific to where we could say, oh, let's go here and let's check this voltage or let's go here and check the voltage, you know. I mean, there could be a problem with this diagnostic terminal here. Uh, there could be a problem with the signal, uh, FPC signal not reaching the fuel pump control module. Or we could even have something like a bad power supply to the module to where the module is cutting out and this DI signal is not making its way back to the ECM. And then of course it throws a code for that reason. So really we could be having a problem anywhere on this circuit. So. As far as where to start, I mean, there really is no wrong way to do this. 
Uh, you know, we could simply go to the module. We could probably back probe this DI signal right here, but to be honest with you, I'm not even really sure what I should be seeing as far as what type of signal I'm looking for. Or we can go to this module. We can check to see if, you know, we're losing power on this uh, B positive terminal right here. Or we could check to see if we have maybe a ground problem. Maybe there's a ground problem on the chassis to where uh, we're losing our ground on this terminal here. And then that's causing a malfunction in the fuel pump ECU. And that's why the code is setting. It is also possible that we could have a bad fuel pump. I mean, what if whenever this vehicle cuts out, we still have power and ground for the fuel pump being provided, but the fuel pump is just not turning anymore. So that's a possibility too, that the fuel pump could be bad. I think that might be the first thing I'd like to do because it's probably the easiest. Let's go ahead and uh, get a lab scope and we're gonna go ahead and back probe these two wires, which is the power in the ground for the fuel pump. And then we're gonna drive this thing and we're gonna see when it cuts off, what are we missing? because whenever the engine cuts off, if we see that we still have a uh, voltage and a ground supply for the fuel pump, then we know that the fuel pump more than likely is just bad. Or if whenever the vehicle shuts off, we're missing one of the two, let's say we're missing the power, you know, we might wanna come back and check to see if we're not losing the power supply or check to see if we're not losing the input from the ECM, you know, or if we're missing a ground, we might wanna check the same things too. So let's go ahead and get under the vehicle. Let's go ahead and back probe these two wires. All right, guys, so something pretty interesting that uh, I noticed while I was down underneath the vehicle uh, back probing the fuel pump control ECU. Let me get down here and show you uh, what I found. Uh, get down in here. So here's the fuel pump ECU. And uh, if you look, I've got my two back probes, uh, two wires. I'm going to hook up two different channels on the power and ground for the fuel pump. So I've got that hooked up, but while I was down here, I noticed that the fuel tank uh, did not look like the factory fuel tank. So if you take a look, hopefully you guys can see, this tank is massive. I mean, it is it is a big fuel tank and it's not plastic. It's, this is like solid steel. I mean, it looks like it's been fabricated. It's got these nice welds. I mean, honestly, it's a badass fuel tank. It really is. It's a nice fuel tank, but that thing looks like it's been installed uh, by some aftermarket company. I'm not really sure, but I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's huge. I think I found a label on the side of the tank here. Uh, let's see. It says, do not weld or torch. Yeah, that's probably a good idea not to try to weld this while it's got fuel in it. Uh, but anyway, it says here, net capacity uh 46 gallons anyway it's got the tank information here i'm not really sure what any of this means but i guess this is the company that makes the fuel tank and i tell you man i hope it's not the fuel pump because uh that fuel tank looks pretty heavy i do not want to be dropping that thing i think if that's the case then it probably would be easier to remove the bed rather than try to drop the gas tank anyway i've got my leads hooked up and I've got it running into the vehicle, so we're going to go ahead and move over to the lab scope. All right, guys, so we're back inside the vehicle. I've got the lab scope over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on. Again, we're on two different channels. Uh, one of these is going to be the power supply, and the other side is going to be the ground control for the pump. So you'll see one's going to be uh, fixated at system voltage, and the other one's going to be a ground. So let's go ahead and turn the key on. As you can see, we have 12 volts on both now I'm going to go ahead and crank the engine over and we should see the fuel pump getting grounded. Just like that. So as you can see we have system voltage on this green channel and this is our ground on the yellow channel which is at 2.75 volts. I just see it just jumped up to 5.5 volts. Now initially you would think that that's a uh, a ground issue but if I'm not mistaken I believe that um, this fuel pump speed is controlled uh, by the fuel pump ECU and it does it by controlling its resistance to the ground so if I'm not mistaken this may be normal what we're seeing because at first when we first started it up it was closer to one volt and then you saw it kind of step up to five volts so it probably went to a lower speed so this is probably normal again the vehicle is running right now uh, we don't have a check engine light on 
I don't believe we have any trouble codes, which we can probably just double check while we're in here, see if it set any code. Go to trouble codes. And there are still no fault codes detected. So um, right now, I suppose everything looks normal. Let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive and see if we can get it to cut off on us. All right guys, so I'm on a test drive here, just kind of staying uh, near the shop. Because if this thing stalls, I don't want to be too far when it stalls, but I'm going to go ahead and focus you in on the lab scope. Let's keep an eye on it. Oops. I'm sorry about the glare. I'm trying to do my best I can and the shakiness. Let's see if we can get this thing to shut off on us. Come on, buddy. Shut off on me. Ah, oh, man, there's so much glare from the sun. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it. All right, guys, so I just got back to the shop from the test drive. Um, drove it for about 10 minutes. And of course, the truck did not shut off on me. Uh, but I wanted to show you something really interesting. Uh, over here on the lab scope sorry about the glare let me set this up here all right so hopefully you guys can see that um, what you're looking at again are the uh, two wires that go to the fuel pump from the fuel pump control module again one of them is going to be a constant power feed and the other one's going to be the control circuit which is a ground now what i was curious about was this ground voltage here and i understand that this fuel pump works in different stages or different speeds and as you can see right now, the vehicle is running. It's idling right now. And if you look at the voltage, it's at around 5.63 volts. So my guess is that this is maybe considered the low speed. And what I mean by that is that while the vehicle is idling, this is probably all the fuel pump needs to run. It doesn't need to run at full speed, so it's not gonna give it a full ground. So we're gonna see somewhere around 5.6 volts. Now I'm gonna show you something real quick. When I snap the throttle, I'm just gonna snap the throttle with my foot. You'll see this ground voltage drop down and you'll see it kick into the higher speed for just a moment while I snap the throttle. So let me go ahead and do that. You see for a second, went down to 2.8. Let me go ahead and do that again. You see how it went down, came back up one more time. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because well, one of the things I have on the back of my mind is whether or not this voltage is normal. Again, the vehicle is running, it's running fine, and it seems to have plenty of power, so when I give it uh, hard acceleration, the truck gets up and goes. So I know the fuel pump is pumping at least enough fuel to keep the engine happy. So what I really need to see is what's happening whenever the vehicle shuts off, which of course, I haven't been able to successfully get this thing to cut off on me so I can see what's happening. So at this point, I think we're just gonna have to go for another test drive. All right guys, so we're back. This is actually the second day. Uh, first day I was not able to get it to act up on me. So uh, this is early in the morning. We're gonna go ahead and try to start this thing up. See if we have any issues. And also we're gonna pay attention to our meter. Key is on. Let me go ahead and adjust my levels here. All right, so as you can see, we have uh, power on both sides. The pump is not on. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the vehicle, start it up. All right, vehicle started right up. So far, everything looks good. See that voltage kick up a little bit here? It's changing speeds. We're just gonna go ahead and let the engine warm up, let it get to normal operating temperature and normal idle speed. We're gonna go ahead and back out and take this thing for another quick test drive. Just kind of keep an eye on the lab scope there. The customer did mention that the morning he was having the truck towed over to my shop, the uh, the vehicle started up, uh, but what? But as soon as he put it in reverse to back out, uh, the truck died. So it did it twice to him that morning. So I was hoping maybe uh, this initial early morning startup. Uh, along with me backing out of the shop. I was hoping that maybe we could recreate that, but 
So far the vehicle is still running and it seems to be running okay. We've got our idle speed now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my seatbelt on. Let's go for a drive. Just down the parking lot here. I don't wanna go too far because I don't wanna get stuck anywhere on the side of the road. Keep an eye on the lab scope. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll try to keep the camera as steady as I can. Got some bumps coming up over here. And it just died on me. Engine just died, truck stalled. What are we showing on the lab scope? Get some of that glare off the screen. Sorry, let me just readjust this. Now, I was not looking at the lab scope when it died. So hopefully I was able to capture it on camera. The truck just stalled on me. I'm looking at it right now, we have system voltage on our second channel and we have around 1.42 volts on the control side. If you look up at the uh, instrument cluster, you can see the RPM needle is dead. The truck just died. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe try to cycle the key off and back on. We'll pay attention to the lab scope. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna try to cycle the key on. Sorry about the glare from the sun. Let me see if I can do anything about that. Just try my best with the glare. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the key on. I see 12 volts and I only see 1.4 volts on the other side. So right now we should be seeing 12 volts on both sides, but we're only seeing 12 volts on one side because right now the pump should not be running. Let me go ahead and try to crank the engine over. Nothing's happening. Let me cycle the key back off. Back on. Now we have our 12 volts on both sides. Let's go ahead and crank this thing over. Oh, let's not forget that I'm still in drive, so we're gonna have to put it back in the park. Now let's try to set this thing back up here. Ah, oh, man, this glare from the sun is really messing me up. Okay, so I'm gonna cycle the key off. Now I'm cycling the key on. Hopefully you guys can see that. We've got 12 volts on both lines. Now we're gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. And the truck starts right back up. All right, so the truck is back up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and drive it back to the shop. And because I was not looking at the lab scope whenever uh, the truck stalled out, I'm gonna have to review that footage and uh, see what we can figure out. All right guys, so we're back at the wiring diagram. Uh, hopefully you guys are following along and hopefully I'm doing a good enough job at explaining my thought process and how it is we're going to interpret what we found on the lab scope. So if you recall, we had two channels set up on the lab scope and of course we were back probed on these two pins right here. Uh, this pin is the power feed supply for the fuel pump that's coming from the fuel pump ECU. And this pin right here is the ground side control for the fuel pump. Of course, the way this works is that the power feed gets sent through this wire, it goes through the fuel pump, it comes out of this side right here, reaches back to the fuel pump ECU, and then whenever the fuel pump ECU is ready to turn the pump on, it's going to provide a ground. Now, if you recall, this ground seems to be a stepped ground. And what I mean by that is that it works in steps of different resistance. So it provides a different resistance to ground to control the speed of the fuel pump. So at certain points, you see that we had around five volts on the ground circuit. And then at certain points, you see that we had around one volt at the ground circuit. So of course, one volt is closer to being a full ground. That's gonna be a higher speed for the fuel pump versus us only seeing five or six volts here. That's going to be a slower speed because it's providing more resistance to ground. Anyway, so I reviewed the footage as far as what we found on the lab scope when the vehicle stalled. If you looked at it closely, what you would have seen is that when the vehicle stalled, we still had this 12 volt power feed. Now that's important to note because what that tells us is that everything else on the system is functioning properly. And what I mean by that is that we know that if we were to lose the power feed on this line right here, then we would be back tracing it to a problem somewhere with the fuel pump ECU or one of the power supplies to the fuel pump ECU 
or maybe even the ground. And let's not forget the fuel pump control because if we were to have lost the fuel pump control, then we would not see the fuel pump control module trying to ground this circuit. So automatically we're able to rule out a lot of different possibilities beyond the fuel pump control module, including a problem with the relays. Now what we did see on the lab scope was not the power dropping out on this side, we saw the power dropping out on this side. Now we know this is the ground side control of that circuit. Now what that tells us is that more than likely there's a problem somewhere between the power feed that's getting to the pump and the power that's coming out of the pump. So the next question is, is it possible that we have a bad fuel pump? Now, yes, it is possible that we have a bad fuel pump, but to be honest with you, it's highly unlikely. And the reason I say that is because it's not a characteristic of a fuel pump to stop working and then start working as soon as you cycle the key. When a fuel pump dies, it usually just dies. Sometimes they stick, you gotta beat on the gas tank to get the fuel pump to turn. So to be honest with you, this does not look like a characteristic of a bad fuel pump. To me, more than likely, we have a problem in the wiring somewhere above the fuel tank. So we need to do some wiring integrity testing to make sure that we don't have a bad connection here. So let's go underneath the vehicle. All right guys, so we are underneath the vehicle. I'm gonna take you above the gas tank. That's where the fuel pump is located. Now, to be honest with you, I can't actually see the fuel pump. I can only see it through the camera screen because uh, there's no room here. If you look, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the drive shaft and the muffler. So I'm just kind of sticking my arms up in between to get a visual of the fuel pump. So it's actually a lot more difficult than it looks to gain access to that fuel pump. And I don't know if I can even see the wiring. I believe it's running uh, to the back side where the frame is at. So let's see if we can get a close look at the wiring. Maybe even the connector. Make sure the connector is not loose. I'm going to try to stick my arm up in there. See if I can make sure the connector is secure. Oh. Ah. Ah. I can't even reach it. There it is. Ah. I mean, it feels secure. The connector feels pretty secure. Let's see if we can locate the wiring along the frame. All right, guys, so we're along the frame and the gas tank, so I'm gonna look up in there. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the wiring to the fuel pump, which, I don't know if it's been messed with or not. I don't see any obvious signs of damage here. This does seem kind of loose though. Kind of get a visual. What do we have here? Look like butt connectors. I know the factory doesn't use butt connectors. See if I can get in there. All right, I don't see anything obvious, uh, but I think the next thing I want to do is I've got my graphing meter down here with me, <clears throat> and we're still on the same two channels. We're still on the uh, power feed side and the ground control side of the fuel pump control module, also known as the fuel pump ECU. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of grab the wiring harness. Uh, with one hand now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the wiring harness and I'm gonna move it around and I'm gonna see if uh, Our signal drops out. So let's take a look down here at the meter I'm gonna go ahead and start moving the wiring Oh check that out Oh check that out there we go And it completely dropped out Yep, there's definitely a problem in the wiring here. Let me try to kind of finesse this a little bit. 
try to figure out exactly where the problem is. I'm just kind of moving my hand along the wiring, trying to figure out exactly where the problem is. You see it kind of coming and going. I'm just kind of moving it around, trying to find the sweet spot. I guess what I'm really hoping is that our wiring problem is not above the gas tank and it's somewhere where we can easily access the wiring to repair it because I really am not looking forward to having to drop this gas tank if that's the case. So I think I may have found where the problem might be. I'm going to go ahead and open up the harness right here to get a better look at it. Alright guys, so I take that back. Uh, actually, I think I may have found the problem in the wiring harness and it's not it's not in this area right here where it's accessible it actually feels like it's at the connector right at the fuel pump as you can see I'm kind of barely able to get my hand up and over the frame just enough to touch the connector for the fuel pump and when I do that check out the uh, graphing meter I'm just gonna slightly touch it you see it drop out. I'm going to let go of it. Push on it. Uh, so honestly, to me, it seems like the sweet spot here is right up at the top near the connector of the fuel pump. I'm going to see if I can try to disconnect this connector without dropping the gas tank. Alright guys, I don't know how, but we actually managed to disconnect this connector. And uh, first thing I notice is this electrical tape here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take this off. See if we can get a, a visual. I'll tell you what, man, it was not easy to remove this connector. See some electrical tape there too. I'm trying to unravel this. Well, I don't see any obvious signs here of bad wiring, so let's kind of peel this back here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of this. All right, so I went ahead and removed all of the uh, electrical tape and the wire loom. Um, I don't see anything obvious as far as any signs of damaged wiring. I was really hoping that I would see something pretty obvious, but um, so far everything looks good. Now, what I want to do is I want to differentiate whether or not we have a problem with the power feed side or if we have a problem with the control side, which is these two wires right here. This big blue wire is going to be the power feed side. This is the power that comes from the fuel pump control module. And then this yellow wire over here, which actually it's it's got a butt connector on there and the yellow wire actually becomes a red wire um, but either way this yellow wire right here is the ground side control now what we want to know is are we losing power on this blue wire getting to this connector or are we losing connection on this yellow wire going back to the fuel pump ecu so i think a real quick way to check that is i have my back probe on the blue wire which is the power feed and the key in the ignition is on so if you look we have our system voltage. The battery is a little bit low, um, but we can still check this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and move the wiring, and we're gonna see if our power is dropping out. I'm just kind of moving the wiring. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm not seeing any dropouts on the graphing meter here. Everything looks good, so I don't believe we have a problem with the power feed side. Now what we want to do is go ahead and switch it over to the ground side. So let me take this back probe out and we're going to put it in on this yellow wire. All right, so we now have the back probe uh, on the yellow wire, which is the ground side control. Now the really interesting thing is, is that you'll see 1.42 volts on this wire. But remember, this is disconnected. This 1.42 volts is actually a bias voltage that's coming from the fuel pump ECU. So this bias voltage can actually help us in making it easy for us to determine whether or not 
there is a continuity problem between the fuel pump ECU and this connector here. So now that we're back probed, I'm simply going to do the same thing that we did before. Is I'm just going to move the wire around. And we're going to see if we get any dropouts here. Well, check that out. We don't see any drop in voltage on this wire here. Everything looks pretty solid. So this yellow wire actually looks pretty good. We don't see any voltage dropouts. Our signal is staying flatlined at 1.42 volts. We're still getting that bias signal at the connector. So what that tells us is that the wiring integrity between the fuel pump ECU and this connector right here is good. And now I'm thinking that that only leaves one more possibility and that's uh, maybe a pin fitment issue. I mean, it's possible that we could have a terminal that's spread open. I don't know if... Well, actually, check this out. Just visually looking at this, these are the two uh, fuel pump wires right here. Again, this is the control side wire right here on the right side. And this on the left side is going to be the blue wire, which is the power feed. And actually, just looking inside of there, you look, you can see the top... You can see the top part of the terminal. You see that shiny part? It's not It's not showing up on this side right here. Let me grab something uh, to do a quick terminal drag check on this to see if we don't have a spread open terminal. All right, so what I have are these uh, uh, Whippo welding tip cleaners. I've had these things forever. And uh, what I'm gonna use these for is to check for pin drag on that connector. So I'm gonna see which ones fit in there that way we can get a measurement. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, pin right here, and if I touch it on this terminal here, uh, it's got a pretty good amount of drag. Like, for me to push this in, I have to uh, kind of force it in. I'm not spreading the terminal open, but uh, it's giving me just a nice good amount of drag or resistance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check the other side which is a side that we're suspecting. Oh man, check that out. Hopefully you can focus in on that thing. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a lot of room in there for this thing to just slide in. Yeah, that terminal is definitely spread open. I mean, that's like tossing a hot dog down the hallway. It definitely feels to me like there's a pin fitment issue with this connector on this specific terminal here so we're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can fix that all right guys so I'm sorry I couldn't show you this in real time I needed two hands to do this but essentially what I did was I used a pick tool I popped up on this white clip right here to remove it and what that gave me access to were the little clips for the terminal so I just stuck a t-pin uh, on the side of the terminal here and pushed that clip outward and I was able to slide the terminal out of the back Hopefully that makes sense, but we now have the terminal out. And if you look, this is our spread open terminal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna take maybe a pair of pliers or something and try to compress this back to where it needs to be. All right guys, so I'm about to put this back together, but real quick, I wanted to show you uh, how I was able to kind of close this terminal up. And if you look on um, the other side, let me flip this around. If you look at this side of the terminal, it's actually got a hole right here on the back side of the terminal. Hopefully you guys can see this hole right here. And essentially what I did was I used a pick tool like this right here to slide into the hole on the back side of this terminal. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Let me see if I can get a better angle. All right, so hopefully you guys can see it a little better. Uh, now, if you look at the back side of the terminal here, there is a little hole right here and what that gives you access to is this uh, piece of metal right here that actually folds into the inside of the terminal. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about, but this top lip right here actually folds to the inside of the terminal. And all I did was simply just stick this pick tool inside and push down on that fold of metal. And what that did was that kind of closed up the hole in the terminal. So 
Hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. You'll hear it click. I don't know if you heard that click, but it's now secured in there. And I just wanna show you real quick. I've got my drag tool right here. I'm just gonna touch the tip of it. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's got just the right amount of drag, just the way this one feels like. So I think that's a fix. Let's go ahead and put this back together and plug it back in. All right guys, so I've got the connector reconnected to the fuel pump. Uh, everything's reattached. I went ahead and uh, I put the wire loom back on the harness and wrapped it back up in electrical tape so it's good to go. Uh, let's do one last quick check. If you look at the lab scope, again, we're still on the same two pins on the fuel pump module. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to move the wires around and we're going to see if we're still getting a dropout in voltage. So let me stick my arm up in here and move the wiring around. And I'm moving it in the same area that it was dropping out before right around the connector and everything looks good let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive all right guys so the moment of truth i'm going to go on another test drive i've got the lap scope hooked up and uh, we're just going to keep an eye on this make sure it doesn't stall out on us and we're just going to hope for the best here all right guys so i've been driving now for about half an hour uh vehicle's running great have not had any issues with installing. I haven't had any issues with it bogging down or any performance issues so far. I think this is a fix. I'm gonna go ahead and get this back over to the shop and we should be good to go. Anyways guys, once again, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe to the channel. If you like these case studies, please make sure to go to my channel, check out all of the other case studies I have. Once again, I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it informational. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.